There are three primary components of good balance. Feet, hands, and head. First, let's cover the feet. Players should move and set up to hit in a lower playing height and not upright in their standing height. To know your playing height, bend the knees enough so you can no longer see your shoelaces. To help players feel a lower playing height, you can also use resistance, like the flex trainer as Kalindi is now demonstrating. There are also two ways to be on balance with your feet. One is called static balance, and the other is called dynamic balance. Take a look. In today's more powerful game, sometimes players will be on balance and stable while hitting, as Kalindi is now demonstrating. This can be described as static balance. To develop this basic skill, play mini tennis and hold a cup of water, trying not to spill a drop. However, as players evolve, they will frequently have dynamic balance, meaning that although they may be in the air while hitting, they still land on balance after the shot. This occurs due to the sheer velocity of the swing generated through the legs, body rotation, and arm speed. Let's look at a handful of the explosive movements the players of today utilize on their ground strokes. First, on short high balls, players will push off their front foot and land on their front foot. The second example is on wide and deep balls. Players will often load on their outside foot and push off to land facing in the direction they will have to recover. Third is on wide balls to the two-handed backhand when players have time to load on both legs. They push off explosively, rotating and landing on both feet, helping them to quickly face and recover in the right direction. Here, Kalindi is demonstrating this on the forehand side as well. And when they do not have time to load on both legs on the two-handed side, it looks like this. They load on the outside foot and push off to land again on the outside foot to help them quickly recover for the next shot. This happens on wide forehands as well, as Kalindi is now demonstrating. Finally, Watch how Kalindi takes an extra step forwards after contacting each ball. I call this the follow-through step. It happens naturally when players set up early and lean in towards their target. Good job, Kalindi. One of the hotly debated questions on this topic is whether or not to teach these various footwork patterns. My feeling is to observe the player over time and help them to evolve their own set of athletic skills. In the case of my 12-year-old daughter, I have not taught her any of these dynamic footwork patterns. They developed and continue to evolve out of practical necessity as she executes different shots from various positions on the court. The second balance issue deals with the non-racket hand. Often overlooked, the left hand for a right-handed player like Kalindi plays a huge role in her development as a competitive player. It may be to line up a forehand or during the contact and release phases of the slice backhand, the non-racket hand is an important part of overall good balance. The third and final balance issue to discuss is the head. The concept of keeping your head as still as possible while hitting a tennis ball is simple. Try bobbing your head up and down the next time you're playing and you'll quickly understand the more your head moves, the harder for your eyes to stay focused.